Hi there, Paul here with a quick video on using Flow with SQL Server, with SQL Server triggers. So I was recently doing a project where I uh, had to do a bit of this and I have uncovered some things which were not immediately obvious to me so I thought I would share them in case that helps anyone in the community. So let's have a little look at Flow and SQL Server triggers. So I've got a very simple flow here. Uh, it's uh, triggered by when an item is modified and it's when an item is modified in a particular table I've got called recommendation. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use compose to uh, let us see one of the values from that table. Now from the name when an item is modified you might think what's happening is that SQL Server is um, notifying Flow to say, hey Flow, something has changed, I need you to do something. That's not quite how it works. What's actually happening under the hood is Flow is communicating with SQL Server on a uh, schedule, on a regular basis, um, and it's checking to see whether there is anything new since the last time it looked. So let's just jump into SQL Server to see how that looks. Here we go. So one of the tricks uh, to this, one of the things you need to know to make uh, this work, is that your table in SQL Server, if you want it to work with that modified trigger, has to have a timestamp or row version column within it. So row version timestamp are basically same name, uh, sorry, different names for the same thing. So sometimes in documentation you might see it referred to as row, row version and I tend to call it row version, uh, but the actual field type I think in SQL is, is timestamp. So what are these timestamps then? Well, if you've got one of these columns in your table, then every time you modify a record in your table it will get a new row version value and that row version value will be higher than any of the ones that came before it. So let's just see uh, how that works. Um, let's do that. And we'll see that the row version has increased. So we'll do that again. This time it's DFE. Let's make that test 17. and now it's DFF. So this number is just getting bigger and bigger each time um, we modify a, a row and that row is being stamped with the latest value. So what's happening with SQL then is on this routine uh, it's going and it's taking a look at SQL Server, it's seeing what the highest um, row version is and then the next time it goes it's saying have you got anything above that value? So it's looking for anything that is new. Okay. So we can see what's happening under the hood a little bit if we go into our top resource consuming queries. So let's have a little look here. So I've already had this one open and I've gone through and found um, the particular query that's running. So this is flow running a query against SQL Server and the query it's running we can see here is to select things from the table on which the trigger exists where the row version is greater than whatever the row version was the last time uh, we checked. One thing to note is that it will only bring back the first 2048 rows, so if you're in a situation where you think your rows might be changing um, more than 2048 between each check by flow, then uh, you probably want to be looking at a different sort of solution. In fact, I think that's not quite what this is uh, designed for anyway. If you've got that many changes going on, you don't want to be triggering flows based on each of them. OK, so we can get some more information from here. I'm just going to hover over this. Uh, I've got my time period set to the last hour. And I can see that we have run this query 115 times in the last 60 minutes, 
which is equating to running about every 40 seconds or so. So every 40 seconds or so, Flow is going to run this query and it's going to see if there are any new row versions and if they are, those are going to be returned back to Flow so that it can process them as part of the steps in the flow. So keeping in mind that this is running, you know, perhaps every sort of 30, 40 seconds, um, something that it's well worth doing is putting an index on your row version column. So without an index, what the query is going to have to do every 30, 40 seconds is to do a full scan of the entire table to check to see which uh, row versions are higher than the value that Flow last saw. So it's going to pay off if you've got a largish table to make sure that you have an index on that particular column so that you are cutting down dramatically on the amount of work that SQL Server is having to do. In this case I've just put the, the index on the row version itself. I haven't uh, done what's called a covering index to cover any of the other um, fields that are going to be returned. So we can see here in our query plan it's got to do a key lookup. So that means that it's going to find the rows that have been modified. It's going to get their ID numbers out of the index and then it's going to have to look up those ID numbers in the table so it can pull the full record out. Now I'm not expecting my records uh, or many records to change uh, between each uh, run of the, the flow between each time the flow checks so I'm quite happy to live with that key lookup but um, you know you need to do your own uh, thinking about performance. Okay so let's see this running so we did a test 17 let's just do a test 18 and we're going to go into flow and see what we can see so here we are back in flow again we can see our various flow runs so the last one was three minutes ago that was probably me changing it to the value 17 there we are and what did I just change it to? Just changed it to 18. So let's come back here now. Um, we'll do a refresh. So we might have to wait a few seconds. Let's pause it while we wait for the flow schedule to fire again. There we go. So now when we go into this run of the flow, we should see this is the one where we're setting it to the value 18. So a couple of things um, that might be worth pointing out then. Let's do two changes in quick succession. So I'm going to change uh, these additional notes to the value of 20 and then I'm going to change them to the value 21. So let's do that. So I fired that, it's told me that one row was affected and then that row was affected again. So what is the result going to be in flow? Are we going to get a flow run for when we changed it to 20 and when we changed it to 21? Or only for 21? Okay, you've got a moment to <coughs> make your guesses. So let's just pause again while we wait for the flow to catch up. There we go, and let's have a look, and what we'll find is we've only got the run for 21. So let's remember we changed it to the value 20, and then we changed it to the value 21. But that change happened within the cycle of the flow checks. So each time the flow checks, it's only going to pick up the most recent change to a particular record. So do keep that in mind. Uh, if you're doing some sort of auditing where it's really important to make sure you've tracked every single change that has happened, even if another change comes along shortly after and overwrites it, then flow is not going to be the solution that you want to use. OK, let's do another little check. So we're now up to row version E03. So what's going to happen if I run this query? So additional notes, already the note is test only 21. So I'm going to run an update 
which changes it to the same value again. So we can see there that a row has been affected and if we check what's happened to that row version, the row version has incremented so that is going to trigger flow running again. So you can make the argument from perhaps a business perspective nothing has changed so why is the flow running but from a SQL perspective something has changed it just happens to have changed to the value that it was before so that does mean a new row version and that does mean that the flow is going to be triggered so let's jump back into the flow again just to prove that do a refresh on here so it did run the flow again even though the value was the same as before because as I say in SQL terms a change has actually taken place if you want to avoid that sort of thing happening then you're going to need to change your logic a little bit so that you've got something like this only change the record where it doesn't already match the value that you're changing it to so let's remember down here we're on E04 if I run this statement okay the WHERE clause is excluding that row because that row already has that value so zero rows have been affected and we're still on E04 and so when the flow next runs it's not going to see that as a change the row version number has not increased cool so uh, a couple of other little things to point out with the flow um, let's just go into the edit it's well worth clicking on the here it is the little information bar and then saying learn more because that will let you know that you have got to have a row version column in order for the uh, modified um, trigger to work and also that you need an identity column for the on new items so the on new items works a similar way but it's looking at the identity column rather than the row version column to see when new records have been added Okay, one other thing that may be useful for you to know let's jump into this other flow that I've got here okay I've got a flow here again it's when an item is modified so I'm pulling in the modified records and the business logic in this case here we are is to only run the rest of the flow when certain conditions are met so when the status is reviewed approved and when the email sent column is not equal to true so we won't worry about the specific use case but the idea is we're checking to see which fields are oh, sorry which records have been modified and then we're checking those records the fields within them to determine whether we need to take an action or not now obviously what's going to happen is every time we make a modification the flow is going to run that's going to cost us a flow but a lot of the time it may be that we don't actually need to take any action that the flow is just going to terminate so that's costing us flow runs unnecessarily so what we can do to reduce the number of flow runs is in our advanced options we can set an a filter an O data filter so this is performing the same sort of check that this is performing so we've changed our trigger a little bit to say when an item is modified and when the status is reviewed approved and when the email sent column is either false or it's null only then do we need to run now if this runs uh, or if a record is modified um, and this runs it will apply this filter straight away and this won't count as a flow run so if there are no new records which match this filter then for the purposes of your um, flow counts the flow effectively 
has not run. You you haven't lost one of your flow allowances. So good idea to put your filter directly in your when item is modified step your trigger rather than having it further on. So I originally did it this way and then I had a moment of clarity and realized that I could save some flow runs simply by moving the filter onto here instead. Okay, well I hope that's been uh, useful and informative. Uh, not a long video this time, fortunately. So uh, with that, I will just say thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then um, please uh, leave a like or leave a comment. And if there are particular topics that you would like me to cover or anything that uh, is still unclear after this video, then um, yeah, just drop something in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you shortly. Thanks very much.